Hi guys, in this video, I'll be giving an update as to where we're at with our curriculum choices. There were a few things that I decided to put aside for this season because there seem to be some other things that are working better for right now. Not necessarily getting rid of it, but just deciding to go with what works and, uh, you know, re revisiting those things later on. And then there were a, a few resources that I had on the shelf that... I kind of swapped some things out because as well, those things seem to be working better right now. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is this building right, writing skills books. I really wanted this to work for both my fourth grader and my seventh grader. Actually, in my last update video, I actually shared that I had swapped out the level, this level two for the level one. So she was using the level one and I was doing the level one with my fourth grader. However, it just... They just not, it just doesn't seem to be helping as much as I thought that it would have. That's what I want to say. At least not right now. What they have been enjoying and has been helping, um, they have been writing a lot of like free hand stories in, uh, in Google Docs. And that's something that they do, um, on their free, t on their free time in the evening. And uh, I downloaded the free version of Grammarly. So Grammarly has been, uh, um, helping them with editing their stories and they seem to be enjoying that right now so as an extra resource or as a supplement I think I'm going to stick with that for writing and I'm just going to put this um, aside so I just told all of and um, both of them to put it at the bottom of their of their writing drawers so I'm not getting rid of it and technically it's still in their rotation but we are not going to be using this right now um, for their main writing curriculum, I'm still using Writing with Ease for my second and my fourth grader. And I shared a while back that I am moving a lot slower with writing for both um, my second and my fourth grader as opposed to with my with my eldest. And as my, my, um, my seventh grader's main writing curriculum, we are still with Writing Rhetoric. This is definitely her favorite curriculum. Um, after using the outlining books, we are doing so much better with this. Now we just finished lesson nine. We are on lesson 10. I'm not sure how it is for other people that use this curriculum, but I, I just, we, we don't get through a, an entire lesson in a week, especially the writing time. It takes a lot longer than one lesson as, um, I'm, yes, it's just a guide. The, the schedule that they lay out, it is a guide. But it takes a lot. Sometimes it takes more than two days for us to finish the writing time, the writing time section in particular. But anyway, um, so we are still enjoying this writing rhetoric because she enjoys it so much. I was looking, checking out um, Kathy Duffy's reviews, 102 or 103 um, curriculum picks, but her online, the online um, section. And I was reading under the writing rhetoric just to make sure how the different books like what type of stories it has in each each level i had i had i read it a long time ago but you know it's, pro it's when i first started using this and because we're moving so slowly i just wanted to make sure that it's, it's it was a better mix um and you know i was able to confirm that because i just wanted to make sure it wasn't all focusing on just like you know greek and ancient um history it's not really history per se, but it does mix a little bit of fiction and history in there with the grammar um, and and whatever. So anyway, but this is definitely her favorite curriculum. And since it looks like something that's going to be sticking around, especially now that we um, we solved that outlining issue, I just wanted to, to make sure that um, this is something that we can, you know, I can keep, I can safely keep for her for, for writing. So for writing for my eldest, this is still her main curriculum. So that's where we are at with writing. I kind of still, oh, and I'm still not finished with writing. Um, even though I took out the building writing skills, I shared in my last writing video, this is something that I got for my eldest in particular because she is trying to write a book. And I was looking for a writing resource for kids. I was geared towards kids um, that is not necessarily a curriculum. She absolutely loves this. Um, something else that she read was this plot book. This is actually something I picked up at a thrift store, um, years ago. And it was just sitting on, uh, on the shelf and she did end up reading through it. Now it's not geared for kids. However, 
how it helped was in this book it it tells you how to develop like each scene like in a story and even though she is she is um she and it is fiction it is fiction based now it's not fantasy based which is you know what she likes but she says that the way how it breaks down developing a scene when she combines that with the tips that it give for kids to make their stories more interesting in this she likes she likes these two so anyway so that's quite a bit for writing but um i in my curriculum video i did say that this year i did want to focus on 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 writing before for for I would say that grammar and math has always been something that I try to focus on, but this year I wanted to to really see if I can help them with their writing. And that's why I really was hoping that that writing skills book would have worked, but maybe at some other time. So anyway, that was a lot for writing. Um, So for literature, which is just my eldest, I had gotten her this instructional guides for literature. You know, you think you know your kids and then they go to sleep and they get up a whole new person. Um... But to be fair, she and really liked this um this out of my mind book when she was in the sixth grade, and I thought that she would have enjoyed you know us doing this this um this book together, but we will not be using this um as she said she liked it in the sixth grade, so I'm not gonna you know have her do it if it's not something that she's in, she's um interested in. I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna hold on to it and see if it's something that I can use when my fourth grader gets around to the sixth grade but we will not be using this um on literature still i had shared that i was thinking about getting a literature guide from teachers pay teachers however this harcourt signatures it's working for us right now we enjoy she and i we sit down i set a 20 minute time i do the same thing when i'm reading this how when we are reading through this howards in i will set a, a 20 minute timer and we read the story aloud it usually takes us um, two, sometimes three, three, um, three sittings to get through a story. Um, even though my fourth and my second grader, they are not, um, doing this, but they are hearing the stories as well. So we just, we read through the stories. We have discussion if necessary. And then we would do, um, a couple of the exercises that's um, laid out here. We don't do all of them. We just finished the golden goblet right now. We are on the four generals. We just finished the um the golden goblet, and after we finish the story, we discuss the questions that it has at the end, and the three the three exercises that it had was to write a police report, draw a picture, and design an award. I did print out a template for a police report, and we used the instructions here, and we did this together. The drawing of a picture, because she's taking drawing, she did draw a picture of um, how she depicted the, the servant girl that was described in this story. And that was fun for her. So we just did that. We didn't do the design and award section. So for now, I think for literature, because she's enjoying this Harcourt literature um, signatures book, I'm just going to stick with this for literature. And maybe in the eighth grade, I would revisit, you know, if... um. A literature guide or something else if necessary to help us with literature I actually have some literature books by Holt that I had gotten um, from a thrift store a while back as well two of them that I have there um, so I also have that as something that we can we can look into so that is literature now for history for my younger ones I am still using the what your kid needs to know. I alternate between the second and the fourth grade. If I'm to be honest, I have been questioning myself recently if it is we are if I'm doing enough for history for my younger ones, but for now that's what we're doing for for history. And I do have a playlist on YouTube that I have set up for them as well. So that's where we're at for history for my for my younger ones for my older one we have i'm um, finally started you know reading through this this howard zinn this is my copy she has one as well i will set the 20 minute time and we are going through this slowly because you know it's a, it's a little bit heavy um it sort of work out where we are focusing more on u.s history this year um she also has the american history series she's she's only working through 
I think it's 1607 to 1865. The first one, there's two. And then there's 1865 to present. So um, once a week, only once a week, we sit down for 20 minutes and we read this aloud and have discussions. So it's a lot of pausing and a lot of talking. So we are moving through it very slowly. So we do this once a week. And then another day in the week, she does um, one of the exercises from that American um, history series workbook. She's also using the civics from that same series. So, and she does that twice a week. Well, she was doing it once a week, but now she's doing it twice a week because she's finished with her spelling. So that's where we are at with history. For my younger ones, I'm using this, questioning myself, but still using this. And for my older one, we're using this and the American um, history series. Now, I do like the, the, um, the big fat um, notebook history, the American and US history, but we've read through those before and maybe at some later date, not this school term, we'll read through it again because those are pretty good. Um, now this is something that I had on the shelf. This, this year, there's quite a few resources that have just been sitting on my shelf that especially for my, my older, my older daughter, they have just been getting used. This is something else as well. This United States history, I kept um, one, two, three, four, five history books that was just sitting there, two on world history and three on American history that I found, just random books that I found at the thrift store. This one she seemed to have picked up an interest in. So I guess this is kind of like what she's using for US history and that workbook. And maybe, you know, next year in the eighth grade God's Prayer, we will, you know, try to focus more on, on world history history. Now for my second grader, I did mention in my, I think it's the vlog video that I was considering changing her reading comprehension. I had assigned to her the second and the third grade reading comprehension. Um, and I did go ahead and get this reading, this daily reading comprehension by Evan Moore. I do like the Evan Moore books. And whenever I use them, I never try to finish them. I just, you know, I just use as much as we can. But I do prefer prefer this. I haven't totally taken these out of her drawer, but these are just too easy for her. So, um, so I still have them in her drawer, but she has just started using this. She hasn't done a lot of it. She has only, she's now on week two day four, week two, day four. So she's, she just started this. So that's what my, my, uh, my second grader is doing for reading comprehension and no changes for, for my fourth and my, my seventh grader when it comes to reading comprehension. Now for science, for my younger ones, for my older one, she is using the orange set for this in God's design. So that's what she's using for science. For my, my younger ones, I'm supposed to be focusing on the animals, the worlds of animal, the, the world of animals. We did the, the plants already moving through this slowly, but because I found that I was not being as consistent as I needed to be, I decided to take these Harcourt books. So I'm using quite a few Harcourt books this year, this year, but these, these are Harcourt books. Now this one is, I think level one, this one is level four and they are easier, you know, in my opinion, but that is better than nothing. So when I like sometimes at night, I will read from this and I do try to do some of the exercises, but I found that I was not being as consistent right now because there are other things that I have been trying to make more time for. At this season, they wanted to spend a lot more time doing things like um, like sewing and, uh, and cooking and I can't do everything. So I can't do everything. So I have been making, um, making time for that and shifted around things so that we can do, we can spend more time, more time doing that. So anyway, so for science, for my first, my second and my fourth grader, they are using these Harcourt science books. And when I get time, we still are using this world of, world of animals book. I do like 
this in God's design, but because it's not something that I can give to them to do, it, it is something that I have to do with them. You know, they're moving at my pace. <laughs> Um, so that's where we are at at science and similar to to history I do have a science playlist that they listen, you know, like they listen to different science videos and stuff on YouTube as well So that's where we are at for science Um for reading for my second and my fourth grade. I just wanted to touch and say that um I was having finding myself in in a situation where I similar to science where I I was not I wasn't being as consistent with doing their reading, their reading lesson. And I had to, I had to, I guess, admit to myself that a setup that I had, that was working at one point where I had their, 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 um, their reading and their spend, spelling boards up on the wall. It worked so well during a very short period, but right now it just seems to work better with the board just propped up. At the side there and when we are doing it I just put it up in front of the table and we sit down on the ground and we do reading and spelling that way and that seems to work um, so so that's where we're at so we are doing we have much more consistent with our reading and spelling because you know I've simplified it I guess is the is the way to put that um, I did want to touch a little bit on grammar I absolutely love this fix it grammar curriculum now i can't say that i regret using the first language lessons um but i would say that um if i had to do it all over again um i probably would have done level one and two and i might have said this before and then switch over to fix it grammar now granted i think the 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 fix it grammar the way how it is presented i think it changed in the last two years or so and i have watched a couple of reviews where people seem to find this the way how it's laid out now better and i hope i'm getting that right but anyway that's what i would say this this curriculum i really do see improvements um, especially with one of my kids that I sh uh, last year I shared we do have some um, some learning challenges with her and I have noticed some significant changes in the way that she's able to to um to take a sentence and break it down and and understand it and it is helping in her speech as well so I really do like this fix it grammar curriculum. I can't I can't say enough of that. I really do. My second and my my fourth grader, they are using the level one, and my seventh grader, she is using the level three. For for grammar and also for math, we are actually much further than I thought we would have been. Um, I believe for for um for grammar, they finish, I want to say week 25 or week 26. And for for math, they're actually on week 30 this week. So so that is going to allow me to probably put more time into science, I'm hoping, <laughs> for the rest of the school year. So for grammar, love grammar. This is this is also another curriculum that my elders really likes. Um it's not necessary not that it's challenging because um not that it's challenging, but she enjoys doing it, right? I don't want to say easy because nothing is easy, but um, but she enjoys doing this as opposed to the curriculum that she used in the sixth grade. All right, so so that's for grammar. For math, I love the math you see curriculum. My eldest, she is almost finished with the elementary years because we're almost finished with Zeta. Um, for the rest of the school term, they're going to go through and if I have any corrections that I didn't finish, they're going to work on that and the test book because that's how I usually use it at the end of when they finish with the main curriculum, then we go back. So it's kind of like a review. So that's what they're going to be doing together with whatever um, online resources that we use on a Friday. So that's going to be the math for the rest of the year. And uh, um, but for Zeta, for Matthew C, sorry. She is almost finished with the the elementary years. Now, someone had asked me um, in uh, a while ago, about a couple of weeks ago, or about a month ago maybe, um, um, they had made a comment about, I think it's Learn Math Fast, which is actually a curriculum that I was considering switching to for her for math, 
when it's time to do like pre-algebra. Um, but I am now unsure because she expressed that she, if she can, she would prefer to stick with the math you see system. So I'm not sure. This is the first time in a while. I'm not sure about math, what direction we're going to be going in, but at least for now, we're still doing math. You see, um, I, I am considering probably it because that curriculum is so much cheaper than the math. You see, so I am considering probably getting just the pre-algebra book, which I believe is the third book and uh, taking a look at it, have her take a look at it and see if it's something that she's willing to do. But, um, I don't know, before the end of the year, I had to figure out what we're going to be doing for math when, when she gets into the eighth grade. But for my younger ones, we're still doing math, you see, and we're going to most likely be continuing with math, you see, I'm God's prayer in the new um, school year. But anyway, I'll wrap this video here because I kind of feel myself, you know, going all over the place and that kind of covers every, everything this as, this video took a lot longer than I was expecting. But anyway, hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you've watched this far, thank you very much for watching the video and I will talk to you in another one. Bye.